It is 5 a.m. here on a Sunday morning. We're, of course, still tracking major Hurricane Aaron. Now, here's some good news. One, the winds have come down a little bit. Yesterday, we had a Category 5 just monster of a storm system. The eye wall has filled a little bit and a bit of an eye wall replacement cycle. But we're also starting to see this churn towards the north and west. Now moving west northwest versus due west and this trend is going to continue today and especially as we go ahead into tomorrow and over towards tuesday this is going to make that hard right hand turn so i see a lot of people arguably i understand worried that this is going to continue west all signs still point to this turning towards the north so let me break this down for you so we can educate inform with no hype here just giving you the latest information here at 5 a.m on our sunday morning all right first off take a look at radar it still does have that inner core of the eye wall in fact we can take a look at the radar coming out of puerto rico but you notice over the last few frames see how that eye wall had that convection wrapped all the way around it see right there overnight and now the northern periphery of it is starting to kind of decay a little bit with that said if we look a little bit further towards the south we still have plenty of rain bands across parts of puerto rico in fact flooded warnings are still in place out there we've been looking at severe thunderstorm warnings last night and even a chance of some water spouts or tornadoes kind of moving on shore with some of those passing bands for our friends out here on that island here's a look at the satellite image and you know what we were also seeing yesterday Yesterday, and it kind of looked like it was dipping towards the southwest. Fancy word for you. It's a meteorological word. You probably never use it again. It's called a trishodial wobble. Basically, it's a scientific term when these storms get up to that Cat 4 and 5 intensity. And I cover a lot of typhoons in the western Pacific. You see this time and time again. So that's why the storm looked like it was kind of doing that. Now, as it's starting to weaken a little bit, we're going to see less of that wobbling. But here's a look at those rain bands. Another closer look moving across Puerto Rico. Um, I I think uh, Bad Bunny had a concert in San Juan last night. I'm not sure if that actually went off, but they were definitely seeing the rainfall out there, and that's going to be the continued issue is the rain with these passing storms. All right, so the churn towards the north. It is still going to happen, okay? Okay, let's talk about why. First off, our guidance, our numerical models. It's not just the GFS. I see a lot of people talking about funding cuts and all that. Um that is not just the American model, though. The ECMWF, the Canadian model, the European, the Japan model, all showing and indicating they all use different sources and indicating that churn towards the north here. So, yeah, that guidance is right in line with still the forecast, and we're already starting to see kind of this little wobble off here towards the north. But taking away the models, because a lot of people are saying, well, you're just looking at the models. Let's talk about the atmospheric dynamics, because this high-pressure ridge towards the north and east the reason why our storm system's been kind of threading that needle south of said ridge now that ridge is breaking down and it's going to turn off just like that on top of that over northeast florida southeast georgia we've been looking at some thunderstorms yesterday and today that's due to a trough that has set up that trough is going to help hook this and pull it towards the north so it's all related friends weather is just a fluid stream where these things start to flow Still too close for comfort, in my humble opinion, for the Turks and Caicos and the Outer Banks, for that matter. But uh, that core of the wind is still going to remain offshore. With that said, we're going to be looking at life-threatening and dangerous rip currents all up and down the eastern seaboard as we go ahead through our day here on Monday, Tuesday, over towards Wednesday. Especially, you see right here... <clears throat> By Wednesday morning, you kind of get that gradient set up just like that. You see that? And that's going to be pushing winds and waves all up along uh, the eastern seaboard of southeast Georgia, northeast Florida, the first coast. And that's going to be causing uh, tidal uh, tides to rise, especially since we're nearing a new moon. It's called a spring tide out there. So that's going to be causing that to get above average. We're also looking at beach erosion. And as I mentioned, those life-threatening rip currents. If you're a boater, don't think about it early next week. Just don't head out there, please. It is going to be looking at some 7 to maybe 10-foot waves. Breakers for surfers could be up to 8 to 9 feet for parts of the first coast. I mean... Even if you're a good surfer, and I know the waves sound fantastic, that's some dangerous stuff. So make sure you're being smart about it and taking those proper precautions. That's the key thing. All right, so here's the impacts for the First Coast. Now, this is the elephant in the room. And another thing a lot of people have been 
talking about, so I'm going to touch on it real quick here. The long-range outlook, we have this yellow blob there, another tropical wave, very similar to Aaron coming off of the west coast of Africa. Yeah, here we go again. It, it feels like deja vu, right? And it kind of is. It's a very similar setup rounding the southern periphery of the high pressure area towards the north. If we take a look at our streamline analysis, you kind of get a good idea. Now, here's the good news. Aaron's kind of plowing the path here. Think of a snow plow, kind of pushing uh, the atmospheric dynamics aside. So this is going to kind of follow that. Now, the problem is in that long range, is that passing trough still going to be there or are we still going to have that subtropical ridge? For example, the global forecasting system, the GFS model, has been showing this westerly track. And you can see right there over the Bahamas, Maybe another area of low pressure. This would not be until about the 27th to the 28th. As we all know, the longer range outlooks, yeah, there's uncertainty there. Think of a pachinko, uh, you know, basically you drop that, uh, that disc. There's a lot of different options the further out you are to where it could go. So those models are, are definitely still in their long range phase. But if we look at the dynamics, this looks like it's probably going to develop into a new storm and it is going to take that westerly track there. So that's something we're going to continue to keep it posted. But with that said, let's get through the one we have right now currently impacting our friends out here. So, yeah, I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, First Coast News slash Hurricane Central. we got more information, so be sure to check it out and uh, stop by.